You're watching Chili Boy Productions. I'm Larry Chili Boy Chilson, and this is my review for The Boy and the Heron. Now, before we get into this review, make sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so that you can chill with me on each and every one of my latest videos. So Hayao Miyazaki returns with his first film in 10 years. The Boy and the Heron marks the first film from the legendary animation director since 2013's The Wind Rises. And I think we all were excited to see what he returned to create. Mahito, a 12-year-old young boy, struggles to adjust in a new town after his mother's death. However, when a talking heron informs him that his mother is still alive, he enters an abandoned tower in search of her, leading him to a brand new world. The Boy and the Heron actually kept itself under wraps for a long time. We didn't even have more than one promotional image until just a couple of months ago before it premiered at TIFF as the opening film of the entire festival. Now we finally have a trailer for the film. We have an English language trailer. The cast was revealed, but I avoided that trailer. I didn't even touch that trailer. I've only seen a select few images still that they released as promotion because honestly, I just liked the idea of how secret it all was. I wanted to know pretty much nothing going in. I knew there was a boy. I knew there was a heron and that was about it. <laughs> and since it was Hayao Miyazaki coming from Studio Ghibli, I knew I was going to be excited and seated when it was released. So the moment I had an opportunity to attend an advanced screening, I jumped on it. And thankfully, The Boy and the Heron did not disappoint. What a stunning film this is. So let's go ahead and talk about the positives first. Well, let's get it out of the way. It's a given when it comes to Studio Ghibli, but it still needs to be stated. The animators still need to get a shout out. And this animation needs to be appreciated because it is absolutely beautiful. In honesty, this is some of the most stunning animation from Studio Ghibli. In so many of these frames, it is like literal moving art. You get almost a watercolor effect in many of the sequences, but it's just such a stunning craft to watch in actual time. Everything about the animation is absolutely beautiful. It's full of character. It's rich and just gorgeous, just lush imagery across the film. There's this really stunning sequence where a character is running through a crowd of chaos near the beginning of the film that took my breath away. It was so gorgeous. And then we have almost still shots of slightly moving scenery that had me transfixed as I watched the screen. And the stunning imagery is accompanied by this stunning score throughout. I thought the original score was absolutely fantastic. It perfectly captured the mood of the film that really wanes in tone. It wanes in mood as we move throughout, as we go through these various places and meet these very different characters. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the actual story itself, and this one is yet another classic from Miyazaki. It really plays on themes he deals with quite often in his filmmaking, and it does so in the fashion that he is known to do so often. It's set against real-world Japanese history, and then he gives you a more personal story within that real-world Japanese backdrop and then add the fantasy <laughs> to further explain, to further explore, to further open up these ideas he wants to explore. And honestly, I think that The Boy and the Heron delivers some of the most mature ways of dealing with that we've seen yet. 
By and large, this is actually quite a somber film. It's pretty melancholy, actually, through the majority of the runtime. And I would argue, even as we come to a close, there's not really this big sense of happiness, of this happy ending resolution. And instead, it just kind of like gives you a more open-ended ending. A lot of the messages here are up for interpretation. Obviously, we're following Mahito, and he specifically is dealing with grief. And that is obviously the main idea that we are dealing with here. Grief and the after effects of these horrible events that happen to you, particularly again as a child, and how you cope with them and how you process them. But there's a lot more in here than just that. And the film just gives you a lot to chew on and a lot to think about as you are moving throughout the screenplay. And the film just gives you a lot to chew on and a lot to think about as you're moving throughout. I really loved the kind of Alice in Wonderland feel of this tower. How as you go into the rabbit hole, you are exposed to a wacky land full of wacky, weird, crazy people and creatures. There's some really philosophical meaning behind most of them, but others of them are just kind of fun or villainous in their nature in a very Alice in Wonderland way. And that's what I also love. This film not only draws upon Miyazaki's history in filmmaking and Studio Ghibli and their themes and their ideas that they've explored, but it really draws upon other animated films and live action films with the themes or with the ways it decides to explore themes, this child motherhood relationship that's explored here is reminiscent of a couple of films we've seen recently, and it's all handled quite well. Now, while this is certainly not the funniest or the most jovial of the Studio Ghibli films, there are still laughs here. Several of them, in fact. It doesn't lose its sense of fantastical whimsy here, never forgetting to infuse those touches of humor throughout. So then, what doesn't work so well when it comes to... The boy and the heron. Well, the biggest problem is that I do think it gets just a tad convoluted with everything they introduce and everything that's going on within this, like, tower world. It takes it a step one too far. We go a bit overboard. I think we take one too many adventures in there and it adds to that runtime maybe about 10 minutes too long because the film does start to feel long as we work our way through that third act. And I think that's because the film overall just is trying to juggle one too many things. Just snip out one little portion of the film or one ideal here. And I think it hits that really nearly perfect sweet spot. I also don't love some of the character designs and really it's just two. There are parakeets in this film. I'll say no more. I don't know. Something about it was just off. And then something that we do with the heron. I wonder why. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say because I don't know if they touch on it in the trailer or not or anything else. I don't want to spoil anything. I just wonder why we went that direction with the heron. And then finally, we get this stepmother character, this new wife to the father after the mother dies. And I really have to say, almost everything with her plotline. I don't know. It didn't quite work for me. I see why she was there. And obviously she has a huge role to play in the film overall from multiple aspects, actually. But her connection actually is quite weird when you think about it. And you're like, oh, this is a borderline creepy. It's very strange. Uh <laughs> but then as she kind of gets this formed relationship with our protagonist, they have her say some things that um, well, needed much more exploring, needed much more time afterwards to delve into, and we just brush right past that. I mean, there is some stuff that needs to be unpacked between the two of them that we don't. So really, just the stepmother character uh, would have been interesting, but she just didn't work for me. So overall, this is not elite tier Ghibli for me. This is not going to go in my top tier ranking but it's probably in that next great ranking level down. 
I found the film to be quite moving. I found it to be quite thought-provoking with stunning visuals and an absolutely gorgeous original score, all with the beautiful touch of Miyazaki himself in the director's chair. Some really great cinematography. I know people like to debate it, but it's actually on display here. The camera movement within the animation is gorgeous. I think there's just a couple of screenplay issues that I mentioned that keep it from really being that masterpiece for Miyazaki's last film. We'll believe it when we see it, sir. But if you're a Ghibli fan, please seek this film out. If it's playing in a theater near you, watch this on the big screen because it is absolutely gorgeous. With this sound, it deserves to be seen in a movie theater. If you're an animation fan, please give this a full price ticket. I think you are really going to enjoy it. So that was my review for The Boy and the Heron. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so that you are always up to date on all of my latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see The Boy and the Heron? Or did you get to see it at a film festival already? Let me know all of your thoughts, either in the comment section down below, or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Ah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.